Okay, so today we will start with n person non zero sum games. So, in our previous study, we were looking at zero sum games, and as I said uh, at that time, that we will be restricting to the case of just two players. And the reason for doing that is uh, that, of course, one can look at zero sum games with more than two players, but then the uh, the pro the strategically a zero sum game with three, three or more players is no different from a general non zero sum game. Essentially, the, what happens is when there are just two players involved in a zero sum game, then the other player is each player is the enemy of the other player. So, there is a so each player it makes sense to think in terms of strat, uh, you know security strategies and so on. But if there are three or more players involved, then the prop, then you know this kind of possibility emerges where my enemy's enemy is my friend. So, not uh, not every every you cannot think in terms of uh, just the only the damage that the other player could potentially do to you ok. So, then in that case it is no different from a general non zero sum game. A general non zero sum game will have that players uh, uh, players utility is sum, sum to any any number there is no it is not necessarily 0. So, therefore, there is uh, there will be uh, elements on which they would want to cooperate there would be elements with on which they would want to non not cooperate. So, there is always going to be a compete versus cooperate type of dilemma, which is what is there in you know a, a prisoner's dilemma and so on as well. So, so therefore, we in th uh, uh, zero sum games are traditionally studied only in the case of two players and from there we move to n person non zero sum games ok. So, an n person non zero sum game is what we defined in the introduction of this course you would have a, a set of players n is your set of players. Now, uh, I had defined S i as the set of strategies, strategies and or actually actions of player i. Now, if you uh, we what we will do today is we will assume that this set is finite ok. So, each player has finitely many uh, strategies and by strategies or actions what I mean is the, these are now his these are what we will refer to as pure strategies all right. Now, we had a cost which was u i of x 1 to x n. So, the cost or uh, cost or disutility of player i when players play a profile x 1 till x n. Now, just as we did in the case of in the case of zero sum games, we will now allow players to randomize their choices. So, a mixed strategy for player i is a prob is a probability distribution probability distribution on s i ok. So, he is going to pick a, a pure strategy at random uh, with a certain probability distribution and the probability distribution is the strategic choice uh, of that player. So, let y i y superscript i be this. So, I will denote this as by these are vectors y i in in so, a probability distribution on on s i will be a vector in r r to the power size of s i right and it will be such, uh, such that 
it uh, the uh, the vector is greater than equal to 0 and if you take the sum of its components the sum of its components is equal to 1. Now, now here if you remember this notation that I had from 0 sum gives this kind of 1 basically is a vector of all 1's. Now, it will uh, I will use this note it is a column vector of 1's. So, I will use this notation to denote any vector of 1's ok. It will the length of the vector will be clear from the context. So, this I am not going to write a specific a different type of 1 for each length it is based on the context you will you will realize what the length is ok. So, this is now the set of mixed strategies here the set of mixed strategies. Player I. Right. Now, why do we need to go to mixed strategies? The reason is the same as we had for zero sum games. Zero sum games are, of course, a specific case of this uh, uh, special case of uh, n person non general sum games. So, in that case also, we did not have a saddle point, which means that they did not need not then may not be what you can say is a solution to the game in if you restrict only to pure strategies. But what we found was that if you allow players to randomize, then in that space there is a there is a solution, right? If you allow that that strategic flexibility, then there is a solution. And so, in the same way for non uh, for non-zero sum games also, we, there is in general no there need not be a solution in pure strategies. And so now what we are going to do is we will we are moving to uh, we are allowing players this additional resource of of randomizing their uh, over the choice of uh, pure strategies. What we are building towards, and I hope I will be able to do it do in in today's um, in today's lecture, is is basically Nash's theorem. We'll show that there always exists a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. Okay. Now, so in order to do that, let's start defining a few things. And then we will. Uh, I will also define a Nash equilibrium from there. So, so let's define. So, if players play mixed strategies like this, can you tell me what is the payoff expected payoff that players would receive? So, I let j i of y 1 to y n suppose this is the cost of player i when the players play mixed strategies y 1 to y n ok. So, how do I express this cost? this here is a summation the summation o it is the expected cost that would arise when players choose uh, pure strategies uh, when players choose mixed strategies y 1 to y n. So, when a mixed strategy y i sub x i is used that means, this is the x i th component of the strategy y i this means basically that the probability of choosing probability that player i plays pure strategy x i this probability is y i x i. This is the probability that player i plays pure strategy. Uh, so, y i sub x i is the probability that player i plays pure strategy x i. Now, player i would get uh, would in, would have a cost of u i of x 1 to x n when when players play pure strategies x 1 to x n ok. With what probability are these strategies being chosen pure strategies being chosen? Yeah, you would have a product of you would have product y 1 x 1 y 2 x 2 all the way till y n x n right. Now, why is this a product? We have we have talked about this before even in the case of zero sum games. The reason this is a product is because this is a non cooperative game ok. Players are randomizing uh, locally and independently and so as a result they are not a, they, they they cannot basically have any kind of correlation across their randomization ok. Because, uh, because they the correlation would require communication and communication is prohibited ok. All right. 
and so if you want to now if you want to take the expectation of this so what we need to do is you have to take sum this of over x i x 1 and s 1 x 2 and s 2 all the way till x n in s n. So, this is the uh, this is the uh, this is what player i uh, player i gets when the players play mixed strategies y 1 to y n. What each player wants to do is choose choose uh, choose y i to minimize J, uh, j i of and let me write this notation as we did before j i of y i comma y minus i ok and if remember what was y minus i y minus i it was simply y 1 till y i minus 1 y i plus 1 till y n ok. So, it is the profile of strategies of all players other than player i. Now, suppose others play y if others play y minus i then what player i wants to do is minimize this j i j i of y i. So, I will define this thing this set r i of y minus i ok r i of y minus i r i of y minus i. So, r i of y minus i is the the optimal y is that player i should choose the optimal y i's that player i i should choose in response to y minus i ok so this is the set of uh, set of best responses to y minus i ok so what are these this is all those y i's in capital y i so mixed strategies such that if you look at player i's payoff from y i when others are playing y minus i that is better than that from playing any other y i dash when others are playing y minus i. So, assuming the others play y minus i, what are the best strategies, what are the best responses to y minus i, y minus i that player i can play? Well, it is those y i's here such that if you look at his cost from y, y i comma y minus i, that is better than the cost from y i dash and y minus i for any y i dash, any choice of y i dash. This is called the best response of player i. Okay. Now, y 1 star to y n star is a Nash equilibrium if if no player would want to deviate from this profile assuming the others do not deviate right. So, which means if y j i of y 1 star to y n star is less than equal to j i of y i comma y minus i star for all y i in capital y i and for all i in n ok. So, this is the notion of a Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. Can we write this Nash equilibrium in terms of the best response r i? Can we express this in terms of the best response r i? correct. So, we have, we have at y 1 star to y n star is a Nash equilibrium if and only if y i star is one of the best responses to y minus i star right because uh, uh, all this is essentially saying is that if others play y minus i star it is better for player i to play y i star. So, that means, y i star has to be a best response to y minus i star right. So, y this belongs to r i of y minus i star 
and this has to be true not just for one chosen player i but for all players i is this clear okay so this condition here we can express in another way we can write it in as follows so let's write r of y okay and what is y y here is so let me first write y let denote y as this profile it's y1 till yn okay now write r of y as as this set see remember r r r i of y minus i it was a set right it's a, it's not a, just a point it gen, there could in general be multiple best responses for each player okay uh, in fact if there are two pure strategy best responses he can potential he could just take any con, uh, you know mixed combination of those then that will also remain a best response so there will usually be either either one or there would be infinitely many best responses uh, for a, for a player okay so so therefore this r r i of y minus i is typically going to be a set okay so therefore what we can do is what we'll what we'll do is we'll take a cartesian product of this of these sets so r of y is defined as r1 of y minus 1 product with r2 of y minus 2 all till rn of y minus n okay so can can someone tell me what let's let's understand what space we are in so r i of y minus i what is this a subset of this is a subset of this is a set in what what space yeah so it's a subset of that but more specifically yeah it's a subset of capital y i right it takes some points from capital y i right so this is this is a subset of of capital y i so so this one therefore is a subset of capital y1 this is a subset of capital y2 and so on and this is a subset of capital y n okay so r of y therefore is a is therefore a subset of this product product of y j is j equal to 1 to 1 to n okay now this product we will write this as just y okay so this just like y was a small y was y1 till yn capital y is going to be a product of capital y1 till capital y n okay so in short then i will use this notation here and write that this is in fact a subset of y so r if you see r what r is doing is actually it's taking a point in y okay and mapping it to a subset of y right so r is what we call r is not a, a function r is what we call a set valued map okay it takes for every y it defines for you a subset a, a set okay in this case it's a subset of y itself for every y it's defining a set and, uh, and so and the way we so so the way to uh, one of the notations for this is you often write this as follows you write this as y maps to 2 raised to y r maps y to 2 raised to y y is 2 raised to y the reason is because then if you take a set of size n then how many subsets are there in that in that uh, of a set of size n it's 2 raised to n right so 2 raised to any set is usually denote is, is a notation for the power set of that set that means the set of all subsets of y okay so this is here a set of all subsets of y okay so so let's now try to express the nash equilibrium in terms of r so we just wrote the nash equilibrium here uh, in terms of ri right so 
we wrote it in terms of r i here. Now, let us write it in terms of this r. So, the way we can express it as follows. So, y star is a Nash equilibrium. Remember, y star was just a profile y 1 star to y n star. So, y star is a Nash equilibrium if and only if y star belongs to r of y star. Now, why is this the case? See, remember r of y star was r 1 of y minus 1 star times r 2 of r minus 2 star dot 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 r n of y minus n star and y star itself was y 1 star till y n star. So, this belongs to this means essentially is what we are effectively saying is that the first component belongs to this, the second component belongs to this dot 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 the last component belongs to this right. So, in short we are basically saying the same thing that we said out here that y, y i star belongs to r i of y minus i star for every i. Everyone's clear about this? Okay. So, this property here that that I have that I have written this particular property that I have written has an has a name. So, does anyone know what this is called? It is a fixed point. So, a, so it is in the case of uh, functions we say that x is a if fixed point of f if x equals. So, if you have a if f is from say some x to x and then we say x is a fixed point of f if x equals f x. But what we have is not a function, but we have a set valued map right. So, so in for a set valued map uh, which is from in this case y to 2 raised to y, y star is a fixed point if y star belongs to r of y star all right. Okay. So, this the 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 inclusion here comes up because we are now talk because the object on the right hand side is now a set ok. All right. So, now let us try to visualize uh, through uh, through a diagram how how this actually looks. So, let me. So, I am going to try and plot r now ok. Now, how, what does it mean to plot r? So, I have to what is my domain and what is the what is the range? The domain is y ok. So, here is a point say for example, some y in capital Y. Now, what is its range? What should be on the y axis or what should be on the vertical axis sorry? Since I want to plot r. Huh. So, there are two ways you can try to plot this. One way is you can say well on the on the vertical axis I will try to plot subsets of y ok, but then I have no way of depicting subsets of y. Instead what I can do is I will just plot y itself and then mark out subsets for each y, each small y ok. So, for example, for this y this here is r of y, it is an entire subset not necessary, not necessary. Yeah. So, I will let us take this other y dash here for that it could be something like this ok and here is another y double dash. It could be in three pieces or something. I am just drawing whatever you know some some sort of depiction. So, for every what is going to happen is that for every y here in capital Y, I will end up getting getting some some subset of y out here. Eventually, as I take the if I put together all of these, this is this y itself capital Y itself is a continuous set right, it is a set of probability probability distributions. So, if I if 
if as I is a as I range over small y in capital Y, okay, I will keep getting a set. Eventually, all of these lines will start merging with each other, and what I will get is a basically some kind of a cloud here. Okay, so this here so is would become what is what the analog of what is a graph of a function. They'll merge because there's one for there's a set for each yeah there's a set for each y, right? So when the way we draw a a function is that we have let's say if I was drawing a function x from x to x, I would have some function like this. This then is the graph of the function, right? So it's a set of points of where I take x the and the value of f x, right? Any point on this is is x comma f x, right? Whereas here, I don't have x comma uh, r of so I don't have r, y comma r of y because because r of y itself is a is itself a set. So what I have is actually something more general. So let me write that. So this whatever emerges here is called the graph of graph of r, and that is defined as. y comma z such that z belongs to r of y and y belongs to capital y is clear so this would be the, all of these this whole cloud of points here is the graph of course there could be gaps and so on in between it could have very weird shapes i'm just drawing a simple one here for illustration uh, it does not have to be you know a closed uh, uh, something like this it could you know it could have very very strange shapes. Uh, but essentially what we are remember what we are plotting is all points y comma z such that z is in the image of r uh, image of r and uh, image of y under r ok. Now what does a fixed point then look like? So if I have to look for a fixed point now in this what I need to do is I need to go along the line I need to plot the line where the uh, uh, the the 45 degree line here right just like we so when you when you want a fixed point for a function f from x to x so if this is the the graph of the function what we are looking for when we are looking for a fixed point we are looking for this 45 degree line and we are mark out the intersections of this 45 degree line with the graph of the function right. So, same thing should be done here as well. So, here now my here is my 45 degree line. So, all those points where the graph intersects this 45 degree line are fixed points ok. So, this is a fixed point, this is a fixed point potentially this is I mean depends on how the graph is shaped. It is possible that the graph has a weird shape in which it sort of just negotiates right around this 45 degree line ok. So, it cuts uh, the 45 degree line passes through a gap and uh, the graph sort of is around it ok. And remember when I say 45 degree line I really mean this in a in a large dimensional space because here remember the y x the vertical axis is y the horizontal axis is also y these are both actually themselves high dimensional uh, set uh, high dimensional sets ok. In that you are trying to plot a uh, plot a uh, you know a, li a line in, in, in that space ok. So, these are anyway here are my fixed points. So, if we want to show now that there is always a Nash equilibrium to any game, what we have to basically show is that this this graph of this uh, this graph of uh, the graph of R intersects this 45 degree line or in short that there is always a fixed point ok regardless of what the uh, regardless of what the game is. So, regardless of what the game is means regardless of what this the the u is so long as the s is uh, satis are finite and regardless of what the u is you can always find you can always find a fixed point ok that is basically the um, that is basically the what needs to be shown ok. 
so far so good any questions about this ok. Ok, so what Nash does Nash has two different proofs one is a slightly more complicated proof later he has a more refined proof um, uh, you know uh, he has a sort of a complicated proof in a early early uh, version of the paper later he makes it much simpler. The, so, we will do the later proof the later proof uses an existing theorem what is called an exist a theorem that existed back at his time and it is what is called Kakutani's fixed point theorem. So, so the proof of Nash uh, uh, proof of the existence of a Nash equilibrium is simply an application of Kakutani's fixed point theorem. Uh, to 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 the Nash equilibrium problem. So, what is Kakutani's fixed point theorem? It says the following. So, suppose say let S be a subset of R n ok and suppose it is convex closed and bounded. So, it is convex closed and bounded. Now, consider if a function a set valued map phi phi maps s to subsets of s ok. Let phi from s to subsets of uh, mapping s to subsets of s be a set be a set valued map ok. Suppose phi is now he puts two conditions on phi first phi is is convex valued ok. So, suppose phi is convex valued ok and the second is that phi has a, a closed graph means you take the graph of phi ok in short you take the graph of phi it is a graph of phi is closed ok. So, graph of phi has is to be a closed set. Now, what is what does it mean for phi to be convex valued? Convex valued means that if you take see the values of phi are sets right. So, convex valued means that those sets are actually convex. Ok, what this so what this is effectively saying is that phi of x is convex for all x in S. So, if you take the sets that phi maps x to those sets are convex is this clear ok yeah. So, says that if phi so what does the theorem say it says that suppose phi is convex valued and phi has a closed graph then phi admits a fixed point ok. So, what does uh, so what does Kakutani theorem say well Kakutani theorem says that if 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 you take a set S that is closed convex and bounded and take a function phi ok which maps S to subsets of S and suppose phi has these two properties phi takes convex values the values of phi are always convex that means for every x phi of x is a convex set and phi has a closed graph 
that means you take the graph that I defined previously, that graph is a closed set, then it has to be that phi admits a fixed point. Okay, that is what Kakutani's fixed point theorem. Is. 